Justin Tranter is the songwriter behind I Am America, which is the theme song for the HBO reality show We Are Here, co-writing the song with Shay Diamond. And I am here with Justin now. And to start, uh, what kind of relationship do, did you have and do you have with drag and the queens that are featured in the series, which is, of course, Shangela, Eureka, and Bob the Drag Queen, you know, before uh, you signed on? My relationship with drag uh, goes way back. Uh, I um, came out as queer and gender, we used to say back in the day, gender fuck, but gender fluid, gender whatever, um, in 1994 when I was 14 years old. So I have been seeing drag live and in person um, since I was a teenager. Um, and then I was in a band for a very long time called Semi Precious Weapons. And um, I, I wouldn't say it was drag, but I was in full makeup and six inch heels. Um, but that's how I was living my life daily then. So that's why I wouldn't call it drag, but it was definitely part of the New York City nightlife scene. My band did very well in New York City nightlife and obviously drag is a huge part of New York City nightlife. So we played many shows with drag queens, um, hosted many parties with drag queens. So drag's been a huge part of my life for a very long time. Um, I came into loving the drag race a little bit later than most because when it first came out, I was just basically touring full time nonstop. And it was before you could just easily watch TV on your phone in the middle of nowhere. Um, 2009, 2010, you couldn't just like, you had to actually like sit down on a TV for the most part. So I fell in love with drag race a couple years ago and now of course watched every season. So when I heard about We're Here, um, I thought the concept was so beautiful and so touching. Um, and then I love Shangela, I love Bob, I love Eureka. Um, I've met all of them now at different points. Um, and so when Steve Warren, who's one of the co-creators of We're Here, approached me and Shia to write a song for it, we uh, were beyond excited to watch the show and see what we could create. Yeah, and the song is, so joyful it's such a celebration and just lyrically there are so many great clever lines like truth is i love you even when you get offended which i yeah. love and then another one is which is even better is my existence is a riot yes <laughs> so um, you know, what was that lyric writing process to me and shia are super close friends super close collaborators um we have written many songs together uh so when we get together, it's really easy and it's really fun. But what was so great about this is that we always have fun when we're making music, but for the most part, we don't really write fun songs together. You know, I write fun songs in my pop world all the time, but Shia has a lot to say. She has a right to have a lot to say. <laughs> um, she makes, she breaks people's hearts in all the right ways when she sings. Um, so this was the first time, there's a couple other instances, but this was the first like full on party song that we did. But what's so great is it's this joyous celebration, but she is still saying some very real shit. And so what I love about it is that she still gets to be Shia. She still gets to, to be a proud black trans woman who writes these amazing lyrics, but we got to do it in this sort of party celebration classic old school dance track. Dance and like soul music dance, not like what we think of as like it's, it's dance. Yeah. Well, yeah, musically there's these great horns throughout oh. the song. Um, why did you end up choosing that instrumentation? Just Yeah, I have to give credit to um, our collaborator, Aaron Kanata, who co-wrote the song with us and he produced the song. Um, he's amazing. He tours with Shia, produces for a lot of people here in LA, writes for people here in LA. Um, but you know, he and she are also, it's like the three of us are kind of like the posse and his dad actually played those horns. Um, and I think his cousin, but I know for sure his dad, but um, his dad's a musician in New York. Um, and we wrote the song for We're Here. We wrote I Am America, um, watched the two episodes, wrote the song right after we watched the first two episodes. They like sent us like, you know, advanced links to watch the episodes. And um, we wrote the song, sent it over to Steve Warren, the, the producer and co-creator. And then I got on a plane to Nashville and um, Steve was like, we love it, but we need it like right now. And I was like, oh fuck, I'm not even in Los Angeles. So I called Aaron, I was like, hey, you have to finish it. 
um, it was, she is just like her scratch vocal, but she's such a good singer that her scratch vocal sounds wonderfully fine as a final vocal, but like, it was just, we had to go. Um, and all of a sudden I wake up the next morning in Nashville and he sends me, hey, how do you feel about these horns? That my, I had my dad play horns. And I was like, well, that sounds so fucking good. And the fact that your dad played it just makes it even more fun. But yeah, so it was, I can't take any credit for that. It was just his, to get that classic soul party vibe, horns are such an important part of classic soul. So we went for it. Totally. That's, that's the best part. <laughs> um, well, I saw that you were also part of the lyric video on uh, yes. Shea's YouTube page. Yes. How did, how did that all come about? You know, so it was so funny. So we were sitting there and trying to figure out, all right, this is so exciting. Like this black trans woman has the theme song for an HBO show. Like, this is so dope. This is your, like, this is a, such a big moment for you, Shia. Damn it, it's quarantine. <laughs> like we can't make a video, you know? But I was like, we can't let this moment pass. Oh, speaking of past, there's the helicopter. Um, the beauty of all of us working from home, hi. Um, so we can't let this moment pass, we have to create something. So the first person we called was Alok. I don't know if you know who Alok is. Alok's in the video. Alok is gender non-conforming. They are a poet, performance artist, um, just beyond, beyond brilliant. And so we asked Alok if they would be a part of it and if they thought it was a good idea. And Alok was like, yes, go. I'll, I'll, of course I'll be a part of it. Um, and so then from there, we went and asked Jacob Tobia and asked Chelamian. Actually, Lope got Chelamian for us, which was amazing. And then, of course, the queens from the show all did a lip sync to it, which was super fun and super inspiring um, just to see everyone come together in quarantine and lip sync this song that just, you know, I just think she has shined so beautifully on this song. And so it's so great to have all these amazing LGBTQ people from very diverse backgrounds all come together and be a part of it. I was just living for Angelica Ross, too. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Shia got Angelica Ross. That's why I left that name out. Sorry, Shia handled that all by her damn self. So oh, I, wow. <laughs> I forgot that part of the story. But yeah, Angelica playing the guitar, giving you like um, risky business life. Oh, so good. Love it. <laughs> and I mean, we're, we're here as such an inspirational show and not really in a way that feels like cheesy or anything like that. I but agree, yeah. Truly, it just allows people who aren't from a big city, who aren't from LA or New York, who are living in these small towns, who don't get this kind of exposure to drag, at least on a local level very much. And we just right. see them be able to express themselves and just be free. Yeah. Um, so what do you hope that people will just take away from watching the show? Yeah, you know, it's so funny you mentioned that because the, the lyric you brought up before, truth is I love you even when you get offended, was so inspired by what, well, the whole thing was inspired by watching the show, but that line was like, I just, you know, Bob and Shangela and Eureka do such an amazing job of having very hard conversations with people um, in a loving way. And obviously, I believe in all activism and all advocacy and all hard conversations, if someone is saying something that truly puts your, your humanity in danger. You don't have to be nice to them. <laughs> but if it is just a conversation, someone's trying to understand and someone's trying to learn, um, even if they, they slip up and say some stupid shit, as long as their intentions are right, I think it's important that we have these loving conversations. And that's how we actually progress. And that's how we change hearts and minds. And I think that this show does it so beautifully. It's crazy. Absolutely. Um, and you mentioned it earlier, you're kind of a big deal in the pop world, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to talk about the song, Lose You to Love Me, the Selena Gomez song you wrote with her. Such a big song. We here at Gold Derby think it could be a major Grammy contender. Who knows? From your lips, <laughs> goddess's ears. Putting it out into the universe. Thank um, you. What was just the inspiration behind that song? Um, thank you so much for bringing that song up. It's such a special song to me. Um, I think to all of us, you know, the inspiration to that song is just Selena's truth and Selena's life. And um, me, Julia, Matt, Men, and Robin, and Selena, um, you know, we worked on her past album together. We did Hands to Myself and Me and the Rhythm. And me and Julia have done a lot with Selena as well outside of Matt, Men, and Robin. But um, that, that day was the first day that all five of us were together in, in a couple years. 
Julia Michaels went on and became her own pop star. Matt Men and Robin live in Sweden. Selena's producing TV shows and movies. And so it was the first time the five of us were in a room in a long time. And Selena just had a lot to catch us up on, to be honest, um, and was telling us about her life and her healing and her growth and um, the work she's doing herself and all that stuff. And so the song just came right from her. Like there's, there's no fancy snazzy story. It was just catching up with friends and putting it into music. Hmm. And it became her first number one song on the <laughs> Billboard Hot 100. Um, you, like you said, you've worked with her quite a bit on a few of her albums. How did you react to that news that she had finally kind of reached that kind of a milestone? Um, well, I reacted in many ways. It was actually a great story that the morning that we got the news that Billboard announced it, right? Because we find out when the world finds out and we don't find out any sooner. Um, and I was, I had my two best friends from high school were here visiting me. They live in Chicago still so, and they were in LA with me. And we were having breakfast and someone texted me, congratulations. And I, of course, like went to look at Billboard's Instagram to make sure I was like interpreting their congratulations, right? So we lost our minds personally with my friends, but we've been friends for 20 some years. And so that was really cool. But then of course, immediately got on FaceTime with Julia and Selena. And I'm just, it was just felt so good because we've written a lot of music together, the three of us. <laughs> um, we've been on an amazing journey together, the three of us. And we know, what unbelievable talent and taste Selena has. You know, she has, I think she has the best taste in, in pop music. I think um, she's so willing to tell her truth and expose her truth to let other people heal through her healing process and to see that go number one and to see the, and to see the world respect her the way that I know she always should have been respected since day one um, was really cool. Yeah. Well, you have been especially busy over the past few years, I think, especially just in this pop music world. And you also just co-wrote a couple songs from Lady Gaga's new album, which yeah. I love. Um, Thank you. This is kind of a broad question, but what do you think is the key to not only writing a kind of a catchy pop song that people will just get stuck in their head, but also just a good original feeling pop song for me it's for me people do it in a thousand different ways for me i just have to tell the truth um and it's not about my truth anymore i told my truth in my band i lived my insane life now my job is to help other people tell their truth so whether that is, if the if the artist that i'm working with is in the room and they are co-writing and they are part of that process we are telling their truth and only their truth and nothing about the truth so help you goddess if <laughs> It's just us and another songwriter, and we're gonna pitch that song somewhere. Normally that songwriter I'm working with is probably 15 years younger than me. And they have that amazing late teens, early 20s passion and, and raw energy that they need to get out. And so I wanna tell that truth. So for me, and even if it's a fun song, you know, I use the example of Cake by the Ocean all the time, which I was very fortunate to co-write with Nat Man and Robin and Joe Jonas. And after hanging out with Joe Jonas for a couple days, um, he is many things, but two things that he is and two very big parts of his personality is he's really fucking funny and he's really fucking hot. So I thought we should write like a funny, sexy song. And like that, in that moment, that was his truth. Of course, Joe has many other truths to tell, but like that's a part of who he is. And so telling your truth doesn't always mean doing something as raw and vulnerable as lose you to love me. Sometimes telling your truth is also eating cake by the ocean. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, we do like to talk about awards at Gold Derby and yes. you have you have gotten some nominations over the years. You got a Golden Globe nomination for your song yep. from Ferdinand. You got a Grammy nomination for Issues, yes. Julia Michaels song, of course, and your song for Klaus last year got some attention too. Um, do you have any just fond memories of attending award shows, getting nominated, the whole whirlwind of that experience? Yeah, you know, for me, I just, I think it's really cool. I'm not gonna lie. I think um, award shows, a lot of people love award shows. I, I think there's something really about like, queer people, we really love award shows. There's something about the glamor and the, the emotion and the, I don't know, the stakes, I don't know. And so I've been obsessed with award shows my whole fucking life. And I never, 
I never, I always imagined myself there, but I got to a place where, you know, after my band got dropped from so many record deals and all this shit happened, um, I thought, okay, this isn't gonna happen, you know? And so when it did start to happen, I couldn't believe it. And the Golden Glows was so cool because I got to like talk to Sharon Stone. You know, they're not music people. So I'm like, there's Gina Davis and there's Sharon Stone and there's all these women that I'm obsessed with. Um, so that was really cool. And then the Grammy is, was, the Grammy nomination was unbelievable because as songwriters, our, the categories that we can be nominated in are like almost nothing. And as a pop songwriter, there's basically only one category you can be nominated in, which is song of the year, which is maybe the hardest category to get nominated in for an artist, let alone for a songwriter. You know what I'm saying? It was, it's not easy. So you know, I, I made sure my parents were there. I made sure my best friends were there because I was like, as a songwriter, it doesn't matter what happens with my career, getting nominated in this category is really, really difficult. So we all need to be there and be really excited no matter what happens, whether we win or lose, because I might not get this opportunity again. So um, I loved it. I, I sat there for both the Grammys and Golden Globes until the very end, even though people start to leave and shit, you know, and I'm like, I am not leaving. This may never happen again. People would kill to be here. I am going to take this in every second. I love, I love that answer just because, you know, I talk to so many people and they're always just very like humble and like, you know, this isn't why we do it and all of that. But, you know, award shows are cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it isn't why we do it, but. Right, uh, yeah, of course. It, for a, a queer person who didn't find success until like 35, which in the music business, 35, it's like it's almost done for you. Like, time, bye. Um, so for a queer person who didn't find success till 35, I exactly sop it all up like give me that award show i love that yeah. <laughs> well i can imagine something that was even more meaningful is last year you were honored with the aclu bill of rights award from southern california yes. for your activism work um yes. what does what did that mean for you to receive that honor it's you know that i my split half my time half my time is making music and half my time is activism, advocacy, and fundraising. Um, lots of, <laughs> lots of fundraising. Um, and so, you know, to get the ACLU Bill of Rights Award, um, it not only is an insane, insane honor, and I think I'm the first gender non-conforming person to ever get it, which is also more, even more inspiring. Um, but it was, it, that was truly humbling. People talk about being humble for their Oscars or whatever. No, like, in that room, I'm still like a baby activist. You know, I've only had the connections and the what I've been doing it my whole life. You know, I've been raising money my whole life for causes, but I've only been able to really do it at this level the last four or five years. And so there's other people in that room getting awards who have been changing people's lives for 50 years. And I'm like, I will accept this award and I will make sure I raise a lot of money tonight because of this award, but this is not about me. This is about these people who have dedicated their entire lives to add activism, advocacy, and fundraising. You know, it's, um, I, ex I, I'm so honored for the award, but it's all about the people that do it every single day. And I'm just lucky that I get to help them with celebrity connections and fundraising and stuff like that. But they're the ones who um, make this their life's work. Yeah, that, that's a good attitude to have, I think. Um, well, Justin, I wanna thank you so much for talking thank to us today. It was me. such a pleasure, yeah. Pleasure is all mine. And for those of you watching, hit like and subscribe for more Emmy season interviews like this and head to goldderby.com to start making your predictions. Bye.